Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to be doing another J Plays video. Uh, this one with the Bomb Tar deck we covered recently. Now, I said I think this is one of, if not the best deck in the 2006 format, and I'm going to stick with that statement. I also said I think you're going to want to be within about five cards of this deck, and I'm also going to stick with that. I think there is multiple ways to play this deck, but I think optimally for a lot of the better decks in the format, you're going to want to be within about five cards of this. I think there is some different arguments you can make. Um, I think you can argue Battle Frontier versus Curse Stone versus um, like Desert Ruins, for example. But I do think um, being able to have something that is effective in both the Drag Trode and the Meta Knight matchup is really, really strong. It also helps if you prize the Lunatone or the Soul Rock against any sort of deck that plays Pidgeot. With so many decks in the 2006 format now playing Space Center and higher counts of Space Center, you're really going to want to be able to bump um, bump that Space Center and make sure that Pidgeot shut off. Matchups like LBS, which can be very favorable, become much, much, much trickier if they have access to Pidgeot. Now, we, once again, um, in the five games we played, everything went pretty well. I'm going to say... I won't spoil the games. I will say that we did play against several fighting decks. And the Fire Energy Hole and FF combo is very strong, but at the same time, it's not the most consistent. It is it is very hard to set that up and set it up under multiple Dark Trainitars. Um, I will say I don't think Protective Orb, like maybe one or two Protective Orb, is necessarily a bad choice for the deck. Um, I think it does improve certain matchups like Ryags, but at the same time too i think those are pretty i'm gonna say slightly favorable to at least even matchups on their own um the one copy of jirachi from hidden legends i think is absolutely outstanding we see that in multiple points in the video how that just one, one copy of jirachi put in a lot of work um the 2-2 electrode is played fine i will say i i understand why people like the third i don't think the third is necessarily bad um just that we stuck with the the 2-2 line for the deck other than that um i will say the one cop the third copy of Poland mentor at times can be very um it can feel redundant but i also think that you you need to have a good opening with this deck especially when we split that jirachi line like if we open the hidden legends jirachi um, having a mentor to pair with that is so much more important than if you're playing, than if you open with like the Deoxys Jirachi. Um, I also think you could argue if that third swoop teleporter is necessary, but at the exact same time too, there's just so many situations where that can be so incredibly strong. And then some matchups where you just absolutely do not want to leave the Lapras, the Lunatone, or the Soul Rock um, in play, and being able to swoop them out is really good. Or other situations where your Jirachi is asleep in the active spot and you want to swoop it into a Voltorb and then Electrode and then go extra Energy Bomb from there. Um, the Energy lineup, once again, I think is is pretty darn good on stuff. Um, I think certain matchups and certain um, metas, you could argue like a fourth heal energy in here. Um, I also think you could argue, say, do like 14 energy versus 15 um, the energy count does seem very high. We we do put a lot of emphasis in trying to get some energy in the discard pile at the start of the game. Um, a lot of the time for like extra energy bomb, we're not getting the full five. We are mainly getting just one, two, sometimes three if we're lucky. Usually we're, we're having this go off in the first few turns of the game, and then we're really trying to control the opponent from there. So there's arguments to playing that higher energy count, really trying to get some in the discard pile early, and then being able to manually power up a second or third Dark Trinitar over the course of the game. But it is an area where I think you could find a, a spot. Uh, the one Elms played okay. Uh, there definitely was games and situations we wanted a second one. The one Rockets Pokeball also played okay. I do think you can make a slight argument to go like four Dark Pupitar instead of the Rockets Pokeball, but I, I did really like the single copy of Rockets Pokeball. Um, And then other than that, I think there is... You could do arguments for something like a Steven's advice or just maybe like a draw supporter of some sort, but um, just that single copy, even like a VS Seeker, I could see being very good in here. But uh, generally speaking, you rely more on Rockets admins to draw you large cards because it's kind of a multi functional supporter where you're putting your opponent into smaller hand size, then ideally you're drawing a larger amount of cards. 
I think you can also make arguments for like a fourth battle frontier or, um, you know, like four curse stone, something like that. But generally speaking, I think the Lunatone Sorak combo along with uh, the three frontiers is, is just the best way to play the deck. Um, other than that, let's just go ahead and jump into the games and see how I did. All right, it's a pretty solid opening from us. Um, we get the Drachi, Drachi opener. Uh, the double Larvitar is also nice. This means that we don't necessarily have to put the transceiver into a mentor. Um, especially since we're able to play down a lot of our hand. Um, the Hound Hour from our opponent could mean a couple of different things. It's obviously going to be some sort of Houndoom variation, but it could be um, a turn two style deck or it could be like Nidal Queen. All right, so it's looking to be a turn two Scizor deck. This should be pretty favorable because the Scissor EX has a hundred and uh, twenty HP plus metal energies, and we can use dark energies to cancel out metal energies. And then we're gonna have access to things like POW to also get the metal energies off the Scizor. Um, I go ahead and just attach the energy to the Drachi so we wake up. Um, at some point, we may need to retreat the Drachi, and the energy is gonna be free if we. Um, um, use electrodes. So I purposely do not bench the second Larvitar because I don't want to instantly fall into um, a Houndoom lock. So we are going to try to play around that. Opponent has a couple of different options. They could try to just go aggressive with the Houndoom and put some pressure on our Jirachi. The other option is to do like they're doing now with um, just trying to power up the Scizor EX. The struggle of the turn two decks is they usually don't run a lot of energy acceleration and they rely very heavily on putting a lot of pressure on the opponent. So um, if we can get ahead in energy drops, we probably just win the game. So looking at a couple of different options here. Um, the Swoop Teleporter is very appealing to me. Uh, maybe go for like an Electro DX or something. Scientist can also be very strong. A um, little surprising that we took the Scientist there, considering uh, the fact that our opponent has that low hand size and... Um, our opponent has that low hand size and... Um, we have the transceiver in hand. I'm going to go into Wishing Star again. Yeah, we just want those dark energies to cancel out a lot of the uh, metal energies if our opponent has any of those. Go ahead. Swoop Teleporter would be awesome for this. We actually do end up hitting it. I think we're going to check here. Unfortunately, we don't have the scramble energy, so we're just going to have to end our turn. All right, we go ahead and hit another swoop. Um, really interestingly enough here, we can actually um, use the swoop to knock out the Jirachi itself. And if we end up hitting a POW hand extension here, we can just kill the uh, kill the Scizor. All right, so we don't hit the POW, but we do have the admin. Go ahead and have the scramble. Yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and knock out the Jirachi here. The advantage to this is we are going to be able to um, um, get the break the Houndoom lock here. And then we do hit our one of Retriever, which is super lucky for us because we knocked out the Voltorb. We're going to be able to get the Voltorb back. And then next turn, we can um, use the extra energy bomb to put us back down on prizes, reactivate our scramble. Um, and then be able to knock out the Scizor. He's going to need a Metal Energy here, and then he'll have to settle for Steel Wing to play around this. Okay, so he hits the ER2 heads, but this won't even matter because our game plan is still to uh, use that Electro DX. It does not have the Metal Energy. And at this point, if we're able to get ahead on the Energy Drops, we should be able to just win the game from here.
hoping we don't see anything else from our opponent, but it's going to be really hard for them to try to disrupt us at this point. Things like ER2 can be really annoying for a lot of decks, but for us, it's it's not going to matter at all. Yeah, we're going to use that extra energy bomb. And then work on setting up a second uh, Dark Tyranitar. Add Minim to a low hand size. Um, I think I'm double checking to see if I had um, just played that Larvitar down this turn. Yeah, and at this point, we're going to be ahead on the energy drops. And there's not a whole lot our opponent can do. Um, especially since we are well on our way to that second uh, Dark Tyranitar. Our opponent would need to hit a lot just to even stay in the game at this point. And they go ahead and scoop it up. Um, unfortunate we didn't have the POW, um, but very fortunate we did hit the Retriever off of the, um, very fortunate we hit the Retriever off of the, um, admin. Now this is another one, um, our opponent was playing the Rayquaza Delta deck, which I think is a really cool strategy, but it'll be at a lot of the EX decks in the format, but it automatically loses to any sort of non-EX decks, so like, decks like Nidoqueen, Queen, um, Powtar, uh, Meta Knight, and our opponent doesn't even feel like playing the game, so they just close out the window, and we get a very quick um, win. Um, once they once they see our Mulligan, they know the matchup is probably not winnable, and they don't want to waste the time to play it. So, nice, quick, easy win for us. Okay, so typically in two thousand and six, you don't want to double set if you're going. Um, at the start of the game, because of things like Roselia and Flick Poison, Cyclone Energy, there's really no benefit to double setting, so we always hold the second basic. Opponent is playing, we go first, our opponent's playing Arcanine EX. This is usually pretty solid. A lot of their tricks like um, ER2 and things like that don't do a whole lot against us. Um, hoping the opponent will keep a pretty decent hand size here. Uh, hitting the ER2 there is actually unfortunate. Uh, really would like to get some energy, uh, some damage on that Growlithe. Okay, go ahead and use the Apalm, totally fine. Uh, opponent does go ahead and hit it. Um, that's once again totally reasonable. We are going to be looking for that Electro DX though. Um, I think we're just going to check for the swoop, see if we can burn it. No. Um, and then we're just going for a slightly larger scientist. I think that is debatable. I think we could have and maybe even should have um, just used the adventure on the swoop teleporter. But we were going hard for it. When it goes ahead, use Steven's advice. of all has the turn to our canine. I can't complain too much about that. Um, that's not uncommon. Uh, don't really hit a whole lot here. Um, we have all the right cards, so I think we're perfectly reasonable just to retreat. Um, we actually do... We don't have a problem giving up the price. Um, I think we could argue to go into the other Voltorb. But we didn't want to lose both Voltorbs at once in case we did miss it. Um, but if we had, were able to hit an Electro DX there, I think we just win the game. Because we'd knock out his only only Pokemon with energy on it. Um, and then we would have would have been way up at that point with our POW. No, POW wouldn't have been active, but we would have been way up at that point. Okay, opponent goes ahead and takes the prize. We are gonna go for that um Electro DX again. We see two of them are in the deck. Um Lapras is in the deck as well, but we do not have the um, Professor Elm's training method is prize, which is good information for us to have. All right, we whiff the Electro DX. Um, knowing that we are going to have to probably send up a Larvitar in this following turn, we want to um, have that second one in play so we can evolve a bench one into like a Dark Pupitar. Um, we're just still going to go for that Electro DX. Opponent still doesn't have a whole lot here. If they're with six cards in hand, if their best play is two Elms for another Arcanine, we're something pretty good. They go ahead and attach to the Houndoom. Yep. Goes ahead and knocks it out. 
We're just going to try to do some deck thinning here. We grab the Lapras so we can get a supporter, but um, not having Elms here is pretty unfortunate for us. We're going to go ahead. We're going to go for the Wishing Star. And we, st we whiff hard. This is kind of our last ditch effort to come back and win this game because we do need to be able... Um, we do need to be able to have the Electro DX, uh, be able to use the Electro DX. We do need to be able to get that energy back. So we really can't give up any more than this last prize without losing the game. Okay, this is it. Last chance. Go ahead, we'll attach that heal energy lap for us. We're going to go for that Rockets Admin. Get a full six cards there, need to hit the Electrode. Play it all down, why not? And once again, we whiffed horribly. Um, at this point, we just we had three or four different chances to hit the electrode to win the game, and we just don't hit it. Um, unfortunate, um, unfortunate the Elms was prized, but it happens. All right, we see a Shuppet here. Um, feeling pretty good at this point about it. This should be a pretty strong matchup. Um, anything that plays Bennett, there's quite a few different options for it. We've covered Bennett Metacham and Bennett Jolteon on the channel. There is also um, the Bennett Lunatone Solrock deck like you see in 2007. Um, I'm feeling pretty confident in this matchup, so we actually do ditch a POW hand extension. Go for a Larvitar Voltorb, and then we're just going to make a wish right into um, the Dark Pupitar. The fact that our opponent missed the turn one energy drop is actually huge for us. Um, gives us just a little bit more time to try to deal with um, deal with that Benetti X. My opponent plays Mentor, discards the Lunatone. We know they don't need it, in, or they know they don't need it in this matchup. So nothing too surprising there. Let's see what. What they're playing best case scenario for us is just a straight Bennett deck but it does turn out to be the Bennett lunasol deck similar to jeremy scarf kim's deck in 2007 um does it do they have the energy he misses the energy again once again we are catching some lucky 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 breaks here we do decide just to go ahead and get the Dark Tranitar down. Um, and then we're just going to slow roll it. Get the Electro DX in play. We're going to hold the lap rest for the admin. Um, we want to go ahead and try to put our opponent at a smaller hand size. And then um, then at that point, we want to try to um, knock him out. I think the Electrode might have actually been slightly better to promote. But I think we're totally fine. Um, the Larvitar is fine, too, just to not risk anything. So we actually do top deck the um, the admin, so we don't have to bench the lap rust here. We're going to go ahead, extra energy bomb. No choice. We definitely need those. Um, we definitely need to activate the scramble energies. Yep, making sure we got the knockout. Then we go ahead and add him in here. Uh, Dark Pupitar was a really nice hit. So was the Swoop Teleporter. We're actually going to go ahead and swoop and then evolve from there. Um, that way we, we get to keep that heal energy um, on the, the Dark Pupitar and it doesn't have damage. Um, the one prize our opponent would get from knocking out the Larvitar due to like Shady Move, we're not too concerned about. Then we're just going to take the knockout here with Grind. We do bench the Jirachi just to be safe. Um, pretty much at this point, we the opponent's prizes are probably going to be that pup, that Larvitar on the bench, two Dark Tranitars, and the Jirachi we can give them as well. That'll be their four prizes. Um, the interesting thing in this matchup is that Lunatone does hit for weakness. So we do need to be a little bit careful here. Um... We've got a couple different ways. We can either try to power through it, but we can also um, just try a spinning tail. Um, the issue is, and kind of ironically, is is it's much harder to 
um, get the whole NFF fire energy combo in play than people think it is. Um, because not only do you have your normal setup, but you also have to have find a fire energy and find a whole NFF energy. That's why I think in certain matchups like this and Ryag's um, protective orb is actually really strong as well. So we're going to go ahead, just grind here. Um, realizing the situation we're in, um, I don't actually know if this was correct. I think it was probably better to spinning tail here. And then we can just scramble the, the Dark Pupitar. Um, but I think the the logic was um, we want to be able to ideally knock out the Lunatone with the Dark Pupitar here. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and probably just retrieve her. Yeah. And then we should be able just to bite off. I don't know if this is correct. I think we could have done the same play and still spinning tail last turn. I might be off on math. Okay, so we, we put him down to a small hand size. Ideally, we're going to just hopefully try to keep him at bay. Um, crazy enough, though, is if our opponent does have an energy here, they can actually hyper beam off our one dark, and we wouldn't be able to spinning tail. Well, we would be able to grind for the knockout, but we wouldn't be able to spinning tail. And also, ironically enough, if we can find a Dark Pupitar and get that um, Larvitar out of um, Knockout from Bennett's Shady move, that would also be really nice. But um, we've only got one Dark Pupitar left. And I, I was... I know when I played the game, I knew. But re-watching this video, I'm not sure if I... Um, if the Dark Pupitar is in the deck or not. So um, I know our opponent's going to go for the Disorder. So we're going to go with the Spinning Tail strategy at this point. Do a little bit of deck thinning. Opponent doesn't really have a hand, so we don't really want to admin him here. And then actually trying to get some of those Soul Rocks out of play um, to kind of keep any sort of possible Lunatone damage at bay. It's going to be really strong. Um, we're going to be looking to actually find a heal energy here. We are not able to. Um, I don't really feel like risking the confusion. Alright, so we are actually, we want to the Giraffe Rig is going to stop the Jirachi from using Wishing Star. At the same time, we want to try to protect that hole in FF, so we discard the Scramble and the Heal to retreat. So a couple of different options. Um, opponent. We can just try to Spinning Tail for the Knockout. But that can get questionable. Okay, I want to use for future site rearranged our deck. We're gonna go ahead and admin there just to get out of the future site lock. Knock them out with grind. Yeah, then at this point I don't think they're gonna have an out for it. Yep. Opponent goes for the Bennett. Bennett should not be able to knock us out. Yeah, and then we're just going to be able to grind for the knockout there. So, um, pretty, I don't want to say lucky on our part, but our opponent definitely missed some energy drops. That should be a pretty favorable matchup, and we only had to fight through a single Lunatone. I do think that's one of the weaknesses of the deck. It's very hard for them to string multiple Lunatones together, especially with all the disruptive stuff we're doing. But we also definitely saw the weakness in that game with the fire energy and the hole in FF. Um, how much we struggled to partner those two things together, especially against a fast, aggressive deck. All right, so we got Ryags here. Um, This is probably one of the harder matchups for the deck. It's definitely not like an auto loss or anything. I don't even know if I'd say unfavorable, but it's definitely harder than some other matchups. Deciding on what we want. 
I do think you need to be conscientious of your bench for this. Um, we do mentor first before the wishing star. We know we're going to, we basically know we have to mentor. Um, we just want to thin our deck out a little bit. The nice thing about rags in this format is you don't have to worry about cessation crystal. So a few less things to um, worry about than you would have to in the RSPK format. And we do have that nice line there from Larvitar to Dark Pupitar to Dark Tranitar. So the the path is, the path is set forward. Opponent plays the Cursed Stone. Um, honestly, not too big of an issue. Not too concerned about it. Uh, the Draji staying asleep, a little bit more concerning, but we do wake up from it. Go ahead and do the Wishing Star first. I think we're probably going to grab the Elms here so we have access to that Electro DX. Play our Rockets Pokeball to grab the Dark Pupitar. Um, I do think there's a slight argument to just play a fourth Dark Pupitar over the Rockets the Rockets Pokeball just to help with the prizing. Um, but being able to grab either the Dark Pupitar or the Dark Tyranitar is nice. Checking our deck. Seeing what's prized. I do think it's really important with this deck to, you got to really know what your prizes are. Um, we know an Electro DX is coming, so we go ahead and... Um, just discard the energy. We know we're going to get it back for free. Um, the swoop teleporter is going to give us some options here. So ideally, if we wake up, we can actually wishing star swoop into a Voltorb and then, um, um, evolve into electrode and, and use extra energy bomb. That way we don't actually have to pay any sort of retreat cost on Jirachi. And we also get the free, um, the free wishing star off. All right, opponent use Holen Mentor. Opponent does not bench. They kind of get a little bit of a feeling for what might be coming here. Um, and they're not wrong. Unfortunately, we do get that double sleep, that unfortunate 25% chance. Oh, no, we prize the Voltorb. We prize the second Voltorb. Definitely a risk. You know, and I, I think you can make arguments in the deck for playing thicker lines on stuff. Like, obviously, in that game against our K9EX, having the third electrode could have been very beneficial for us. Okay, we do go ahead and wake up. And the, the tough thing for us is we can use extra energy bomb next turn, retreat the elect, retreat the Jirachi, and then we have the Dark Tranitar, but we do not have a supporter in our hand. This could be a real, real concern for us. What's our opponent going to do? So we know they've got some basics. We know that um, um, Executor is going to be a real, real threat to our Dark Tranitars. Um, we only have one Dark Tranitar. We don't have a second one in sight. That energy root discarding was maybe a little questionable. Don't think we can give up the Electrode. we got to give up the Voltorb. Yep, so he has the Executor, has the Double Rainbow. And he should have a full bench here at this point. But he doesn't want to play it all down. So we go ahead and we go for it at this point. Um, I think hitting the admin just kind of sealed what we were trying to do here. I think we're probably just going to bite off. Yeah, take the knock out there. I don't think it would have mattered, but I definitely would have kept that extra energy route if I was our opponent. Um, I'm hoping with a small hand they're going to have a very hard time finding an Executor, Double Rainbow Energy, and enough Pokemon in play to knock out the Dark Tranitar. We are going to have our POW hand extensions to um, be able to put at least a little bit of pressure on our opponent. A Curse Stone is also going to be a potential issue. It's gonna He's going to get that free prize on the Jirachi. 
opponent has the hole in mentor so they do have part of it do they have the executor double rainbow energy no it looks like they're just going to go for a delta draw option yep um the draw she was not a good top deck but it is going to let us mentor pretty freely um grab the lunatone just so we can um um Spin the deck a little bit, and we're just going to go on Spinning Tail. No point in just taking the cast form knockout. We're going to hope our opponent is not able to find that Executor Double Rainbow Energy. If they do, we could be in a little bit of trouble. Um, we are going to be able to pow the Double Rainbow Energy off the Executor, and then we are going to be able to go ahead and um, um, admin them down to a two-card hand. All right, they do have the Executor. I think that's 10+, plus. so I don't even know if he knocks us out with the full bench. So he does find it all, which is, I guess I should say, impressive. The double Dark Tranitar is making me feel a little bit better now. We're going to go ahead and discard it. That's going to be a second double Rainbow Energy. Only two left in the deck. Um, we are going to go ahead and pal. We're, we just want to make it as hard as possible for him to get another Executor. All right, we do have the Lapras. We want to go ahead. I'm um, just going to counter the Curse Stone. And then we're just going to play the swoop. Um, we are going to get one prize here, which is nice. Um, and then we're just going to set a bunch of stuff up. He only has two double rainbow energies in, in his entire deck. 26 cards, I guess 30 if you want to include. So 33 different cards of the two double rainbow energies, including the hand and the prizes where those double rainbow energies could be setting. He'd have to have Raichu double rainbow energy here to knock us out. Um, if he does that we would have the knockout ironically with the dark tranitar dark energy um and we'd spinning tail he need an energy root on top of it doesn't have it we go ahead grab the mentor i think we yeah we discard um I think we want to hold the admin until he takes a knockout. Now, I think at this point's where I make a little bit of a mistake. Yeah, to be honest with you, we pow and take the knockout, which isn't necessarily bad. But honestly, we have four prizes left. We have two Pokemon that can Spinning Tail. Honestly, we should have just used Spinning Tail here. And I, I think we didn't want to activate Scramble, and we didn't want to do all this other stuff. But honestly, we should have just Spinning Tailed, taken two prizes, Two more things are able to get knocked out. Even if he comes up and knocks us out with Executor, we can still Spinning Tail for the knockout here. He would have needed like three energy roots to stay alive. Um, and we still could have knocked out the Executor with Grind or something and then tried to Spinning Tail on the following turn. Just um, a slight misplay for us. Yeah, we just bite off, take the knockout. It's fine, our opponent... Once again, needs to have Executor Double Rainbow Energy to take the knockout. Um, they're going to have a hard time. I mean, we're, we're fine. We're going to win this game. But I, yeah, we should have Spinning Tail Blaster, and it would have been much stronger for us. Just go ahead, attach that Dark Energy to get the bonus 10 on the active. And we're going to Spinning Tail um, for the knockout at this point. All right, opponent is... We see another Soul Rock. Uh, quite a few things are going to play the Lunatone Soul Rock combo. Um, not a whole lot we can do here. Now, I will say I attach the heal energy. Um, I don't assume our opponent is going to play any sort of fighting energy or rainbow energy in this deck. Typically, a lot of the... I shouldn't say always, but typically a lot of the decks that play the Lunatone Soul Rock combo do not... They, they play it to shut off like Pidgeot and Macargo. Um, So when our opponent played this fighting energy, that did throw me for a little bit of a loop here. And ironically enough, um, we find out our opponent is actually um, just playing the Lunasoul deck, which is is a is a solid deck in 2006, but it's not as common. Um, it's not super common anymore. So, opponent grabs multiple Soul Rocks, so they've got all four Soul Rocks in play. Um, 
I don't know how I feel about this. Honestly, I think they probably should have just grabbed a Lunatone and then used Foresight this turn. Um, we do get awfully fortunate that our opponent misses. The, the Hyper Beam, that would have been a lot more awkward for us. Um, being able to get make a wish off here is is really strong. Oh, and because that'll allow us to play our our scramble energy down on the following turn. Okay, gonna go swoop. All right, so they swoop into Lunatone. That's that was the game plan. All right. Um, unfortunately, that does put them down a Soul Rock. I'm sure they play at least one, probably two, if not three retrievers. I would, if I had to take a guess, I would say two. All right. So opponent has a two card hand. Um, we got a couple of different ways we can play this. But I think we're, we're we've got to go all in this turn. But we know we can use Swoop to knock out the Jirachi. <clears throat> Activate our Scramble Energy, and then we've got Pow. And I think I'm debating it, and I'm trying to see if I've got a better play, but I, I know this is the most optimal play. So, um, yep, we promote the Dark Tranitar. We go ahead, we're going to pow that energy off of it. Now, this can be uh, really, really risky. I don't want to risk the special condition, but I don't know if risking the Hyper Beam was a much better option for me. So that could have been a misplay there. Um, we're going to lose the Lapras, which is a huge risk to us. We go ahead, we find the second pow, which is actually really strong, really nice for us. Finally, heal energy would have been better off throwing it on the Soul Rock, but it's all good. But at this point, we are all in on this this spinning tail strategy, and the question comes down to: Can we get four unanswered spinning tails off? And that's a pretty pretty big ask. Um, I think our opponent is debating the retreat here. Um, but if they retreat, they are all in on that Soul Rock. They go ahead, use the Foresight. This is probably much stronger, especially when they don't have a hand. Yeah, and we are, we're all in on this. We're just spinning tail. We do have the Swoop. We can... If we do get knocked out, we can swoop the bring up the Voltorb, swoop it into a Drachi, try to set up from there. That spinning tail damage is always going to be there. Um, we're going to have five prizes that are all just sitting there. Okay, the opponent does get the double energy. They hit us for some serious damage. Um, we are going to get three uh, spinning tails off before that Tranitar goes down. But man, we've got some con some concerns. And at this point, I realize. Um, I do realize that the Soul Rocks, um, will, the, the Soul Rock will give the Lunatones 80 HP. So, um, yeah, unfortunate, unfortunate, but, um, at this point we do have four prizes just sitting there. I know all we have to do is, um, all I have to do is just get one more spinning tail off and we probably win the game. It's going to be very, very hard for our, for our opponent to recover from that. Okay, opponent takes the knockout. Oh, God. All right, we're going to look for an admin here. We do not find it. This is a very concerning... A very, very, very concerning um, wishing star. None of those guards are going to do much for us. Um... The admin is going to get us the Dark Pupitar, and we are going to be well on our way to, um, to getting that second Dark Tranitar. But our opponent has to be feeling good at this point, um, knowing that we do not have a hand. We do have quite a few good tops here, 
and we top decked the admin. That was absolutely huge. Um, and to be honest with you, my only thought was I knew I was going to be able to dark streak for at least a prize. Hopefully, see something out of it. We draw the Dark Tranitar off of the prizes, and this is just one of those games that does come up well for us. We could have dead drawn for a couple of turns and probably lost the game, but we do end up okay just just off those uh, just off those draws. Um, two really good back to back draws, not only the admin but also the Dark Tranitar out of the prizes. Opponent goes ahead to hole in scientists here. Um, ironically enough, though, we actually are not playing the Battle Frontier down because we, we don't want to give our opponent a way to play another stadium. Um, we're going to be adminning them to such a low hand size as we actually prefer, um, that they're not able to, um, have, be able to play a counter stadium. At this point, though, we do go ahead and play the Battle Frontier just because we know we're going to admin and we don't want to draw back into our own. Yeah, we just spinning tail here. That uh, minus 30 resistance to Psychic um, means that Mew would have to hit us for 100 damage. And with two energy in play and only one ability attached more, three energy, he will not be able to have an attack that's going to knock us out. Um, grind right now is going to hit for uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So grind is enough for the knockout. Yeah, so opponent goes ahead, uh, throws out the GG there. Um, very, very fortunate for us. We had some very good draws to finish that game out, but um, sometimes you just catch those lucky breaks. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video of, you know, Dark Tranitar, Electro DX. I know some people were asking about the deck and playing the deck, and I know it's one of the more challenging decks in the 2006 format to play just because of um, all the different options the deck has. If you haven't already, feel free to follow me on Twitter and then... Um, my content on six prizes. And um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. But anyways, I hope to see you in the next video. If you guys have any comments, questions, or even video suggestions, throw them down below and let's get a good discussion going. All right, see you in the next video.